This show was produced by the Geek Happy Network, creators of the very best in audible oracle entertainment. Uh, you know, going through school and everything, also relationships were not easy. Mm. No. Mm. Man, dating in hey, Vancouver, talk about it. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's one of those things. So when we first arrived, my... You know, I was not excited for dating at all because, mm-hmm. I, like I said, I had a lot of confidence issues, mm. right? And so for me, it was almost like if somebody showed interest, you know, you have an underlying yep. interest over there. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's like, oh, you need to step back a little. But then I enjoyed being in a space where I could like someone, but there was no commitment. Mm. I could go back to my life, mm-hmm. but I like you and I want us to have a thing. But just but not... Not, yeah. Don't get too close. But, you know, you can't really form those kind of rules in a typical relationship, right? But then in... And they used to have, you know, a bunch of crushes, but that's where it used to end. In my second year, I fell for a, you know... I fell for someone, and he was... I had that comfort of being, okay, this is my space, mm. and then I will like you within this vicinity, and then when I go home, you're non-existent mm. to me. Mm. And for two years, that was the case. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and i and it's one of the things that i really enjoyed about that whole situation right and also what what used to help was the fact that there was never a solid solid you know fully solid understanding like it's not one of those things where but sometimes i would want more and then sometimes i'm like eh, not yeah. really. and that in doesn't a, work in yeah a relationship. Exactly. you can't have it like you that. can't have it yeah. both ways mm-hmm. you know and so and then you know he ended up moving on and everything and so on and so forth broke my heart and everything but at the same time i'm like you are indecisive in that time and it's and i realized it's okay to be indecisive you know to some degree but just don't involve other people that's the thing yeah yeah Yeah. i told myself so long as you don't know what you want and you don't have that capacity and sometimes i think about it you know the way i live with my siblings can i imagine myself living with somebody who's not my family to that extent and love them like they you know and also and be like my husband and so on and so forth the truth is no, no. that is the solid truth mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and i feel like i'm not there yet i have never been there i am currently not there and i'm not sure how long it will take me to get there but when i do i will make the you know it will not be one of those let's date for 10 years then get married no yeah. and it's, this is how so a lot of my friends got into relationships Ali into UBC. Like, Do you know how many bottles of wine I have carried and boxes of tissue? Because guys broke up. Right? Right? And I told them it's because when at this age, mm-hmm. discovering yourself is not easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, figuring out what I like, what I don't like, how, how I even feel about, you know, you, there was a time in my life you could harass me, you could even abuse me, and I still wouldn't know. Wouldn't know, yeah. You know, I, I just like, oh, maybe that's just their behavior. Mm. But you, and it happened even at, at UBC, somebody, but you know, the, uh, the, the harassment I was receiving was not that overt one in your face mm. where somebody's trying to slap it's you around. It's emotional. Exactly, it's that emotional, over, you know, overwhelming me emotionally. But I didn't know, mm-hmm. right? And then mm-hmm. later on, you grow up and you're like, eh, this person, this is, this is toxic. you are not, yeah, yeah, you are not being a good friend to me. You are mm-hmm. being, you know, tasteless. And so, you know, it's important you go through that on your own mm-hmm. because my friends who went through it with their boyfriends, like two have managed to, you know, break out, break that, uh, you know, space. And now they're into that whole grown folk thing mm-hmm. and they're getting married and mm-hmm. everything. But ma- majority more not. often than not, it doesn't work out. It does not. It's like, um, what do you call it? Uh, childhood sweethearts exactly. and all that. Exactly. Like there's only a handful of people who can have a childhood sweetheart. Exactly. And unfortunately, I feel like at I feel like a lot of people carry that childhood sweetheart mentality yeah. where it's like childhood sweetheart, high school sweetheart, or like if it's not high school sweetheart, it's like university sweetheart Sweethearts, yeah. and everyone in uni. I remember that. I remember like thinking about that just uh-huh. like when you come to Vancouver, everyone has a boyfriend uh, but, or hey, girlfriend. And that's the pressure came from there. Man. The pressure came from there because for also me, I was it, it was a very weird space to be in because it's like I'm insecure. I don't want him but everybody seems to have one so where do i stand you know and so but at the same time it's just like i don't i never had that type of um like like i said i had a lot of crushes yeah and, you know a lot but of that movies. wasn't your focus no yeah. it's just a bunch of flings you know those things that i felt that would boost my confidence <laughs> here and there yeah. but i was just like listen <laughs> i need to find a way to boost my own ego yeah, without somebody telling me at mm-hmm. you oh, you're pretty and things like those you know so uh yeah so that's that was it and uh, that also after the whole two-year situation with that particular guy i decided ah, i need to control how i feel about these relationships right so my mom always told me maria don't uh, be in a hurry because 
you'll be married longer than you'll be unmarried. Mm. Right? Mm, mm, yeah. That makes sense. Exactly. She's always like, you'll be married longer than you'll be unmarried. So don't be in a rush per se, right?